Seven reasons why employees quit in the restaurant industry. If you've been in this business for more than a day, you know that this is one of the top issues that we deal with. And it is, you already know the problem at hand. It takes a long time to get somebody up to speed. We don't have enough people, especially in this economy who apply. They're not necessarily quality people. And uh, sooner or later they quit. I don't know about your market, but where we're at, uh, there's so many jobs, to be honest, that they just quit from here and two days later they get a job somewhere else. So this is a huge problem we have. And the truth is that this problem will never go away. It has been forever and it may continue being there. Um, in other words, this is an industry with high rate of turnover. And you know that. Today, the reason we're talking about this is because if we do not fully understand why our people quit, and we're gonna go over seven different reasons, and having a strategy to combat these different factors one at a time, you really are gonna get confused. And here's something that I've learned the hard way, to not take things personal. People quit. I'm um, actually the first reason is some of the external factors that it's not even in our control that people quit sooner or later. and you need to have a strategy to battle each of those and gradually reduce the re, you know um, the percentage of people that quit or how long they stay your retention rate that you can increase that um, it will you will always have people quit this is the industry we're in okay i just wanted to make that clear today i'm going to go over five uh, i'm sorry seven reasons why restaurant employees quit and next one in the next show i'm going to share with you our top most effective strategy that we have found for our restaurants um, that is the best method and it's free it just takes some time in increasing our retention rate and i'm going to share that with you as well okay so we're like who is this my name is hingham and my husband and i we own a couple restaurants in the san antonio area we are passionate about helping fellow restaurant owners grow their sales and make some dough if this is your first time here consider subscribing you can find us on all podcast platforms we're on youtube we're on facebook instagram all around if there's any way we can help you with your marketing let us know or any other way we can help you out let me know go to our website www.makingdoshow.com um, you can just scroll down leave uh, your comments and i'll be happy to see what we can do to help you out we also have a marketing agency we're calling it making dough agency and where we help fellow restaurant owners with uh, providing them a text message marketing um, service. It costs less than a t uh, $10 a day uh, to set this thing up on a monthly basis. And we ourselves have a system in place that we map out our promotions for the whole quarter. And it takes me less than an hour because we have a system in place. And we have a promotion and a text message that goes out consistently every single week. And we've done that for over four years. We, for our restaurants, send over 200,000 texts a year. So this is something that we have mastered and we've used all of this systems and these methods to over triple our sales in the last five years. So if you need help with that, if you're curious and you would like to try it at least for free, contact me um, and let me know again. Just go to our website, scroll all the way down, submit a form and I will get back to you, see how we can help you out. Okay, now let's talk about this. This is not the most pleasant conversation, and I honestly would love to hear your thoughts on this, how you feel about each of these things that we're gonna talk about. I feel strongly about each of those, but first reason why people quit is external factors. Let's get this out of the way. Everything you can do to keep people happy, there are always going to be a percentage of people who will quit due to extern external factors, for instance low grades we do hire a lot of high schoolers we own pizzerias so we have a lot of high schoolers or they're maybe in college they overcommit because they don't know how to handle school right they overcommit they're like oh i want to buy an iphone this and the parents are like well you got to pay for it or i want to have a car well you got to pay for the insurance so they're going to overcommit because they want that car they want that phone and they're like well i want to work 30 hours i'm like dude you won't be able to sustain your school and um 30 hours, but I need the hours, blah, 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 so I can pay for this. And then they work those hours a few weeks and the grades gradually go down and then the parents pull them out of work. That happens often. 
I don't know if it happens to you at all or not. So another uh, external factor is shift in priorities. It happens that they no longer are necessarily interested in the restaurant. They're like, oh, I want to go do something else. They're no, this no longer is a priority for them to work for your restaurant. I have a lot of things to say about that, but I'm going to just keep this to, to what we're talking about. A lot of them are going to quit and they're going to say because of personal reasons they're going to quit. And sometimes you never will find out what that means. Some of them are, I don't know, parents are getting divorced or they're going through a rough, what have you. They're going through a depression season. It's the category of personal reasons that you and I may never be able to identify and solve. Another external factor is that they're re relocating, that they may be moving to somewhere else. That sadly happens to us often. We live in a military town and we may like somehow have this team member who's really good and then the family's moving or for whatever reason they're relocating and they just quit. It's, you know, nothing you can do about that, right? Another thing is graduation, whether it's from high school or from college. If you do hire folks who are students, which are great hires, obviously, they graduate and then when they graduate, it goes back to shift in priorities shift in priorities, they no longer are interested. They may have health issues. This has happened as well to us that, you know, a team member may have a health issue um, or what have you. They no longer can work for you. Um, that happens. So what to do about some of these external factors that I talked about? Nothing. You cannot do anything about them. It, it is going to happen at some point and you know that, right? So there's nothing you can do about that. However, friend, I have I have something for you here. It's not like nothing for nothing. Is that the only thing you can do is to identify the fact that they were going to quit as soon as you can so you're able to come up with a contingency plan. And we have a system in place, we call it pulse meetings. We conduct a lot of pulse meetings. And I'm gonna go over what it means and how we do that, specific questions that we ask during our pulse meetings, where you're able to check the pulse of your team members as a leader in an organization, you need to be checking people's pulse. In fact, when you're at the hospital, it's very unpleasant. Every, I don't know, every hour they come and check your pulse or check your blood pressure, right? Isn't that um, happened to you going to the hospital? I don't wish that on you, but that's what happens. The same thing is as a leader in your organization, in your restaurant, you need to have the, you need to be checking the pulse and you need to be um, smelling uh, in the air if they're thinking of quitting, if they're slightly getting disengaged and you can discern by if you know your people it is actually not too difficult to do that and you must be doing that so you can come up with a contingency plan the time to hire somebody to replace this person isn't when they put in their two weeks that is too late by then you're doing that and you're going to suffer and you're going to have a lot of stress so you always need to have the contingency plan and the time to replace somebody is before they leave because you already are anticipating that they're going to leave and you're going to hire somebody to take that position you reduce that person's hours gradually increase this person's hours and things go seamless but you know how that is right so second reason why people quit is the poor compensation and benefits this is a very, very hard topic to talk about. Sadly, if you have a local restaurant, sometimes you will not be able to compete with a big guy across the street, and that's a fact. I have no solution for that in particular. However, I have some tips for you. For all of these, I have some tips for you. So, for instance, you know, I, you know, Walmart, you know, started like hiring minimum nine dollars an hour, and now they're minimum twelve dollars an hour, whatever it is. They don't have enough people, and as the economy gets better and better, this has turned into be a severe problem, right? Our Chick Fil A, which is in our strip mall, they hiring uh, at at twelve dollars an hour for their full time. We, to be honest, are not able to afford to pay our people that much. We do, obviously, our manager and some of our leaders, we do pay them more, obviously. Um, but we can't hire them at a 12. If you hire them at a 12, then you give them the minute, you give them a you know, raise over and over, you know where we're going, right? However, um, there are some tips I have for you to battle this problem that is going to allow you to pay your people more because we need to be paying our people fairly in town or you will be left with C players, people who nobody is going to hire, right? First thing is you need to be informed and you need to do your due diligence and research. You need to look up when you go to, for instance, snag a job or different websites or 
Indeed or what have you, where people are looking for jobs, where, wherever it is that you're posting your job posting, look up whoever, who else is offering a similar job and a position to what you're offering and how much do they pay for it, right? And that's what happens when you're like posting a job posting and you don't get anybody apply for it. You, you need to get the hint. You need to get the hint. You need to figure out there is a reason for that. And we need to look that up, right? Maybe there's a, the same duties and for the same position, someone else is paying more. So at least be aware of that. If you're not aware, you're just being ignorant and that's just not good either. Bad business. So one of the things you can do to battle this problem is to increase your prices. This is something that happens. I see a lot of times with local restaurants, you need to be periodically as in like every six months have a system in place where you gradually increase, increase your prices every, you know, every six months, every year you need to have, you could again, and I have a full show dedicated on how to increase your prices without losing your customers. And I really, I'm going to uh, link it down below so you can tune into that. You must be increasing your prices. One of the main reasons is because so you can pay your people better or you seriously, this is a big problem. One of the reasons you're not able to pay your people more is because you ain't got enough money. You need to increase your prices. We can talk a lot about that. Another one is to simplify your operations. You're like, whoa, what does simplifying my operations have to do with being able to compensate my people more? And how's that related to retention rate? Great question, friend. Here's what happens when folks, um, and why am I talking about Chick-fil-A? We love Chick-fil-A, obviously. Uh, and, and the reason is because we have a Chick-fil-A in our strip mall and we study them and we do have um, multiple friends who, um, run Chick-fil-A's and so we like Chick-fil-A but we like to learn from them so here's what it is when someone gets hired to work at a Chick-fil-A within a day if they work in the kitchen they already can handle their operations right when someone starts working at McDonald's within a day they're able to just uh, because it's so simple right yes I know you're gonna be told well, everything's prepackaged yes I know that so here's the thing if your operations is complex and this is the problem we ourselves have if your operations is too complicated and you've not incorporated some batching and or some specific training and different like things like that, it's going to take you a long time to train uh, up people and get them up to speed. And that matters because if, and there's this uh, company called the Container Store that you could look at them, look them up. The Container Store, one of their core values is uh, this idea um, of one equal three. Let me talk about that. One equal three is that they actually, as a company, believe that one team member must work or be productive or be able to fulfill the duties of um, equal to three team members, right? It's better to have one A player that can replace three C players. And in return, they pay that one A player um, twice as much as a regular, you know, whatever. So for instance, is it better for you to pay one person $15 an hour than having three people that, you know, at $8 an hour, but they're doing mediocre work, right? So you want to reward people who are specialized and they're great at what they do. And this is something that, you know, I think we need to get good at. But if you have a simpler operations, it's going to be much easier for you to accomplish this, to have one person handle more things, right? Do more with less people. This is a principle I talk to our managers all the time. We need to do more with less people. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Next thing is invest in equipment and kitchen tools. So for instance, I'm gonna talk about um, slicing vegetables. We used to slice vegetables with a knife, you know, and trainings for it. And this is how you, you know, slice onions and people will be crying in the middle of the kitchen. This is how you slice bell peppers. And obviously as our production had to go higher and higher as we grew sales, we realize this is taking so long. You do simply the math. If it takes an hour a day for a team member to do this task and you're able to replace that task and you know how much it's costing you say per month for this task to get done. A team member hypothetically is making $10, a, um, $10 an hour, just roughly doing the math here, right? It's $10 an hour to do, and it's it's taking them an hour a day. So it's 30 days a week. We're paying $300 a month for this particular task to get done, right? When you look at it this way and you're like, hold on a minute, can I buy something for $300 that is going to reduce the amount of time that it takes for this task to get done in one hour instead to reduce it to 15 minutes? 
Yes, and that is a good investment. You investing in some little equipment. Um, for instance, that vegetable slicer that I'm telling you, we bought that vegetable slicer just going and you, I don't know if you've seen one of those. Uh, I'm gonna say it was like $250 and that has been tremendously helpful. Do the math and do your due diligence if it is wise to do that. But if you have a little bit more equipment and that is what McDonald's has over you and me, and that is automation and equipment that is replacing people. So they're able to do more with less people and having some equipment could be helpful. Now, I know that maybe you don't have the money to go spend it tremendously, but another one that I mentioned is let go of suit players. Here's how it works. If you need to have um, four people closing at night, all of this is you need to be doing, you need to know the basic math for these with your eyes closed. You, you really need to know those things. How long does it take for people to do closing, right? Closing, it takes two hours for easy math here. It takes two hours to do the closing from nine o'clock, folks leave at 11. And you have four people to close. Okay, four people, $10 an hour average math. That's $80 a night that you are paying for um, somebody to close the restaurant. Are you able to do that task with three people instead of four? Are you able to get three fast people, pay them more, right? That's where it goes. You need to let go of C players and you need to have these conversations with uh, people you hire, you'd be like, listen, if you're able to do this in an hour and a half, I'd be happy to give you a raise. Otherwise I need to have someone else on the clock to do this task and I won't be able to give you a raise, right? So you letting go of C players and having more A players uh, is going to be tremendously helpful because you can pay them more because they do better, right? Conducting pulse meeting very frequently. I mentioned that um, and I'm going to go over a little bit more detail on, on all of those. So one of the things with the pulse meetings is that you must be asking very specific questions from your team members in order to get specific answers. If you simply tell them, hey, are you happy working here? They're going to say, yeah, that means nothing. In fact, one of the things you may not even know why people quit because they what they tell you may actually not be the truth because they don't even know why they no longer want to work for you sometimes. Uh, I'll be honest. So bottom line, if you want to get specific answers, you need to be asking specific questions. And one of the things that we do all the time is we ask a question where it starts with on a scale of one to 10, right? So if I just ask a person to be like, Hey, how happy are you working here? Or how happy are you with your hourly rate? Oh yeah, good. You know, versus if I'm saying, Hey, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your hourly rate? right? They may say, oh, a six or a seven, right? Or a nine or a 10, right? That is a lot more tangible of an information that you can work with, that you can uh, take it to the next level. So in your pulse meetings, you need to be asking specific questions. And in order to know if someone is not happy with their pay, that is the question you ask them on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your hourly rate? So you're like, well, what if they say a five, then you need to, that is going to open the door. That's great. That's great. And because you're going to be like, oh, people are going to be telling me that they're very unhappy with their pay because they want to make 20 bucks an hour. Yes, I know. So here's this may be for another show where we talk about it, but it is great to get things out of the open and ask more questions. They're like, oh, I'll, you know, I think I, I'm actually five. Well, tell me more about that. Why is it? And they're going to be like, well, I, I think that I should be, you know, instead of making 10 bucks an hour, I should be making 12 bucks an hour. Like John. Fantastic. Let's talk about it. So that leads to the other question, uh, the other things. One of the things we do is everything has got to be measured people's skills. It's not like someone's fast or someone's slow if it's not in a measurable way, right? So that way I can be like, fantastic. Maybe this person's name is Susan. Hey, Susan, so you think you need to be paid like John 12 bucks an hour? She said, yeah, great. So John's rate of, in our case, again, with the pizzerias, right? It takes uh, John, again, we have those stats, but I'm making numbers up. John is able to stretch um, eight, 16 inches in a minute and a half. And so his rate of speed is within the excellent range. And that's why he's making 12 bucks an hour. However, your speed is, you know, it takes you three minutes to stretch, you know, eight. And the reason is because we do these time trials and we measure and we 
have these competitions all the time with our people. We document people's speeds because then when it comes to them saying that, oh, I'm not getting paid fairly, we can be in the open and be like, Susan, I'd be happy to help you out in getting you to become faster so I can pay you like John. However, in the state where you're at right now, that I'm not able to pay you more because your skill set is not where it needs to be, right? So that person is able to know exactly what it is that they need to do to get more money. If we're not able to prove a path together and support them and express, hey, listen, I wanted you to get paid more. And why is that? Because I want less people on the clock so I can pay them more, right? So Susan right now is not an A player like John. So my goal as a leader is to get Susan to become an A player. So I need to be like, okay, let, I'm, I'll be happy to, you know, come an hour early. I'm going to time you again. I'm going to share, you know, look your te uh, technique to see if I can help you, right? Let, you know, let's go watch John do it, see what tips we can learn from the way he's doing it. So I'm definitely want to help Susan because I want less people on the clock. Uh, and the, the higher skill set my people have, the much easier of a job I'm going to have as a leader. Right. So I want to talk to you about that. So it always is important to be able to open the door. If you're not able to get this out of the open, they're unhappy with their pay. If you're not able to have those conversations and be like, great, I do want you to make more money. And this is the path for you to make more money. What are the requirements that, that you have for them? Right. Another reason, the third reason, a lot of times people quit is the schedule, right? Again, then they're not going to maybe directly tell you that's the reason. And here's what happens. They're going to come and tell you, I want to work um, Friday and I want to work Saturday all day and I want to work Sunday all day. Right. And they work those schedules for like three months and they realize, whoa, I have no weekends and I'm burned out and they just decide to quit. And, and they're never able to tell because, you know, we agreed in the beginning and that's why it's so important for you to constantly conduct these meetings with your people where you're checking in with them. Are you still happy with the hours you're getting on a scale of one to 10? How happy are you with your hours, the number of hours, the days you work, times of the day that you work, you need to be gathering so much Intel because they may have told you one thing, but the circumstances have changed and you don't know about it. And on their own, they're not going to come to you telling you about it. I wish they did, but they don't. So, some of the problems with the schedule is that maybe it's too many hours. Maybe they're approaching final week and their uh, grades are lower or they have a family issue going on and there are too many hours they're getting or they're not getting too many hours, right? They're not getting enough hours. I'm sorry that they don't want to work weekends. Or they do want to work weekends. The closing times is, you know, killing them or overall they have a poor work life balance, right? The hours that they're getting and all of that. And that is a variable that changes week to week their opinion about their hours and you as a good and smart leader, you want to increase retention. You need to be having these conversations with your people. Listen, tell me on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with the number of hours you're getting on a scale of one to 10? How happy are you with the days and the, you know, days of the week that you work or the hours of the week that you work within those days? You need to get those tangible things so they're a, you're able to take that information and take it to the next level. They're like, well, I'm not happy you know, with the number of hours I work. I'm not working enough hours, right? And you're able to tell them, well, Susan, um, I understand, you know, John is having more hours. It's because John knows both stations and you only know the one station or for instance, right? You don't know everything on the menu. I would love to give you more hours if you're able to handle that. So why don't you come on Saturday? If you can learn these other stuff from this station, then I'd be happy to give you more hours. How about that? Right? So you need to be getting information and coming up with a game plan. And these are very complicated. I wish it was black and white friend and you know, it isn't. And it applies to your operations is different than our operations. I'm just telling you some of these things. And in fact, you're like, well, um, I actually have um, all of these questions. I'm going to put them in a, PDF for you. So you can just print it, maybe go over it with your managers. And I hope that you find it helpful. So uh, I will have the link down below as well for it to go grab that PDF. Next, let's talk about the conflict with team members or manager. Dem, Dem, you may never know about this. If you do not ask specific questions, you will never get specific answers. They may just not get along. Maybe they even have a problem with somebody. Once it happens, they no longer like to work with them because they're not that comfortable or is this awkwardness you will never know if you don't ask direct questions right or maybe they don't feel comfortable working with a manager and they just choose to quit because everybody hates confrontation and uh, they will uh, they will choose just to quit right so maybe they don't get along or they don't feel connected with the team right so maybe you have a team that they already are kind of 
they click a group of them they click and they have these friendships that you know me as a new person in maybe I never got to actually connect and feel that I'm included or I'm part of this team right so how to um, combat that and how to battle this problem is you need to obviously first establish trust and when you conducting these pulse meetings in the next episode I go way more in detail how to do this but all of these apply to those pulse meetings that I'm talking about right you ask these specific questions hey on a scale of one to ten, how happy are you with your team? How much, you know, on a scale of one to ten, how much do you love working with John? Tell me more about that. Why is it? Is there something that blah blah blah, right? Or on a scale of one to ten, how happy are you with your manager? I I can't think of a name, right? Or specifically in terms of on a scale of one to happy are you with how john your manager treats you or how john trains you or the you know how john coaches you so ask specific questions to get specific answers am i sounding like a, a broken record here career advancement oh my goodness this is a big one that's one of the big reasons that people quit and if you own a local restaurant, you may not be able to offer the career advancement that Starbucks offers or Chick-fil-A offers, right? They have the opportunity to grow and become a manager, maybe become a district manager, or maybe move up and go to the headquarters of the company. And you and I may not be able to offer that, right? And that is a big problem. Why am I telling you that? Because we've had a manager who was with our company for four years and he quit and he went and joined, um, HEB, one of the main reasons was career advancement. So here's what happens. They may not see a future in your restaurant. You have, and the reason that happens is because you and I have not created an image of the future and the opportunities that's available to them then, right? You need to be creating this, giving them this promise of where we're going. That's why it is so important as a restaurant owner that you have a vision as to where, what's the future? Are you going to have multiple locations? Are you looking for a general manager who's going to take over um, the restaurant and you no longer need to be there because you want your freedom, right? So that way, if I'm a manager, I know, oh, wow, I want to get to that general manager uh, position, for instance, right? People need to know what they're working towards, right? You understand that. If you've ever worked for someone else, you want to know what's next. That's really important. So some of the ways to battle this is that you need to be oh, okay. So another reason this happens, and that's why I'm going to talk about this is that why they feel that there is no more advancement or no more opportunities is actually because they've stopped learning and why, because you and I've stopped teaching. So they feel like there's nothing else to know about in this business. They feel like they know everything. And you already know the answer to that, right? And the reason, again, we have stopped teaching them. So teach them something new, challenge them to learn new things. You need to paint a picture of the future. Yes. You're like, well, I don't know what the future holds. Of course you don't, but that's why you just simply paint a picture of the vision you have. Right. And this is like pretty big of, I don't know, Steve jobs or whoever it was, right. They're, they believed in a vision of where they were going with their restaurant. They were able, not restaurant, I'm sorry, with their business, in this case, Apple, that they were, they were able to sell that vision. And I, listen, I understand this is not easy, right? Um, maybe they've stopped learning. I told you about that. And so you need to, one of the things you can do is cross training, um, which is great. If you have your kitchen folks or kitchen managers or whatever it is, you want to cross train them to learn some of the front. Uh, skill sets and the front and the kitchen. Those are getting them out of their comfort zone and get them uh, new things. If they're bored and they get complacent, they also feel like there's nothing else for them to do, right? They get bored and no one wants to get bored, right? So they feel like there's no advancement opportunities. So, uh, battling this challenge them to learn new things, as I mentioned, right? So think about it. Can you think of a manager right now? in your restaurant or a team member that you feel that they're a little bit bored, they're a little bit complacent. And what are some of the new things you can teach them? Um, and, or challenging them, challenging them to up their game, um, to be their last best. So here, how it is, for instance, you have a kitchen person, an example of a pizzeria, right? Whose speed that I told you is eight, 16 inches in like a minute and a half. So how are you going to challenge them? Hey, I'm going to time you next time for you to beat that last record of yours, right? Their, their best, whatever record it was for them to constantly grow and get better. You can teach them, you know, so much that they don't know finances, marketing, taxes, budgeting, legal issues, contracts, 
negotiation stuff, involve them in some of these things. You'd be surprised. People would love to learn some of these skill sets and they will have way more respect for you because they actually know what it is that you're doing when you go to your office. And, and why is it that you are stressed so often? Um, inspire them. Share some stories of your own failures and some of the things that you've learned along the way. I mean, I know that if you're in the restaurant business, you have a lot of failures and things you've learned. Is it just us or I don't know. <laughs> Connect the dots. So here's what happens and we can talk about this all day long. Sometimes you people are not able to see the connection between the task that they're doing and how it affects their future. And I have this conversation with our people very often. It, and one of the ways I do that is because I know what they want to become. They want to become a doctor. They want to go into the military um, or whatever, right? They Whatever they want to do. They want, want to become a physiotherapist. I know what they want to accomplish in the future. And they may be washing dishes for four hours on a Friday night. Um, I am able to go in there and connect the dots and be like, listen, you are uh, working with excellence and diligence and handling this hardship, you know, this is preparing you for, for what they're going to be doing, right? So I'm able to connect the dots, how it's building their character. If they're able to give it their best, you know, they're getting stronger, even physically and mentally, they're able to stay focused, um, handling stress, right? It's one of the things that, you know, a lot of times on a Friday night, we have tickets from here all the way to there. And it's a skill set to stay calm in the midst of the chaos. And I tell them that these are skill sets they're learning that is going to help them tremendously uh, in the future, no matter what it is that they're doing. We do also read books with our managers. Mostly my husband handles this part, but every week we, you know, my husband and I, we do, and then also our managers, uh, we get together uh, for an hour a week and we go over a chapter of a book that we strategically have chosen to go over. Um, and again, you want to get them exposed to new topics, new things they need to be learning and getting inspired. Uh, and a lot of times they may not even hear things from you when you directly tell them, but if it comes from another source, maybe sometimes they're, they would receive it even better. So great. And you know, as long as it works, who cares where the source is, right? Um, another reason, and this is a huge one, people quit is because they do not feel valued and appreciated. And I'm going to start by saying that you as a restaurant owner, I am sure you yourself do not feel valued and appreciated and because you're not valued and you're not appreciated. So um, as a fellow restaurant owner, I wanted to tell you that I understand that it is what it is. We're building our business. So um, it is our business. They work for us. Ultimately, they're building our dream. So we do work for them as they are helping us build our dream. You know what I mean? So it is our job to um, show a higher level of leadership. And though they may not perform their best at times, make sure that we're able to communicate effectively, that we value them and we appreciate them. And I'm going to give you some tips. So here's what happens. The reason this happens is sometimes people, and they're never going to tell you, they're just going to be disengaged and you're going to have these conversations and these pulse meetings in the office alone with them or in the dining room or whatever, right? Alone with them. And you're going to ask these questions. You need to get to the bottom of it. And it is that maybe they feel as though their work makes no difference. It is such a hard position to be in when you feel that the work you're doing, you're giving it your best makes no difference. It's as though it's meaningless. You know, like people won't feel valued when that happens. They feel that when they go the extra mile and serve our customers or whatever it is, or serve the team extra, this, this is like one of our problems, actually. Um, we fail to notice it and it seems as though we don't care, right? Because we didn't notice it. One of the things that happens uh, to my husband and I is that we rarely go to our restaurant because we're not involved in our operations. We didn't never wanted, you know, we set our business up in a way that we didn't want to be there in a day to day because we have young children, right? So we're not there to notice when they go the extra mile, how are we going to point it out? to build them up and show appreciation for what they did, right? That's a big challenge we have. So if you see one of your people go the extra mile for the team or for the customers, you need to be quick to show that you saw it, you acknowledge it and you appreciate it tremendously. They feel that we do not know their worth. Ouch. These are hard conversations to have with our people. Um, 
And what matters is that you and I may feel that I do know their worth. I do thank them all the time. But if they do perceive our relationship with them or our manager's relationship with them as though we don't uh, appreciate them, that's all that matters because perception is reality. They perceive the relationship as though we don't value them. So we don't value them, right? So it doesn't matter what you and I think we're actually doing what matters is that how it's being perceived. So this is a big one. Um, this is from a, a book, a uh, very famous book, love five love languages. You may have heard of it in the workplace. Actually, there is a book by the same author called languages of appreciation. We could talk all day about this one. And I simply wanted to touch, just touch this topic. If you're interested, we can do another show on this. Here is what it is, is that based on this author's talk about, again, languages of appreciation at work, here's how it works, is that people have different ways of communicating uh, love and appreciation. So let's talk about it. If someone's love language is, say, quality time, they like to spend quality time with you as their boss or their manager. Um, and they do not get that from you. And instead you constantly tell them, Hey, great job. Thanks for your blah, 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 whatever. They will not receive that appreciation that you have for their work. If they do not receive it in the way that they want to receive it, they want to receive it in form of a quality time. There are actually like little tests and quizzes out there that you can have your people fill out to know what their love language is. Again, this is beyond at work. You can do it with your family, with your spouse, with your children, you know, with, uh, with the same author, you, you get the point. But the, what mattered here is, um, let's go over them. It's one is work, not works of affirmation. I'm sorry, words of affirmation. Uh, people want to be told verbally great job. And maybe, um, there are different ways. So the other one is with the gifts. Sometimes you may tell your people, Hey, great job and blah, 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 good work team and blah, 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 whatever it is. And they like to receive gifts. They want bonus. They want 20 bucks. They want a gift card or whatever it is. That's how they, uh, receive. They feel valued and appreciate it. So all the verbal thing you do will mean nothing to them. Right. Or it is that their thing is the words of affirmation and you give them these gift cards. It means nothing to them. Right. So it is important to know your team, your team members, each of them and what is their love language. It is your job to know as a leader to go the extra mile, mile, have them fill out the form or whatever it is. Again, you can look it up. If you're interested, let me know, send me an email and I can uh, send you what we have and what we use. Uh, words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service acts of services that you know as a leader when i'm like for instance uh our dishwasher is hustling and working really hard me just going in there and say hey good job johnny instead i've been like hey john i got you know good job you know blah 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 and bring him a basket i'm gonna hey i'm gonna empty this for you so you know help him out for a few minutes right that is acts of i'm serving him with acts of service right sometimes people per receive that value and appreciation that way physical touch in the workplace a high five or something like that, which you see appropriate. I'm not saying go refer to the book. It's nothing inappropriate. You know what I mean? High five. Sometimes people like those things where they feel as a team that they're, you know, whatever you know, this, but I don't know. You get my point. Physical touch. The other one is gifts. People want like bonuses or they want a raise, right? Some people don't care about those things. You need to know what people care about and give them what they want in order for you to get what you need for, for your restaurant from out of them. Right? So here's the action plan. And this was a long conversation because it's a very important matter. It is deep. And I wanted you to think about what's the main reason you believe that you've lost your people in the last three months. Some of the stuff we covered, what are your thoughts? Um, I know that I covered a lot and that's why I have that one PDF. I would like you to go download it and fill it out. Um, for each of those, I'm going to, again, specific questions to ask, you know, this is something that you and I need to study and do our due diligence. So do you know the specific reasons why folks quit from your restaurants? Do you conduct an exit interview? Because if you don't, you really should start doing that. If you want to know more about how we do that and all that, let me know. Again, I'd be happy to share more about that. What's the one thing you can do to increase your retention based on what we talked about? What, what, how are you going to battle this? If you feel like it's the, for instance, career um, advancement, how are you going to challenge your people? Right. How are you going to teach them something new? 
how are you going to inspire them? If it's compensation, which you know a lot of times it's that, right? If it's compensation, how are you going to maybe remove some of the C players to open up some money so you can pay your A players more, right? How are you going to do more with less people? How are you going to work on the schedule? And this friend is an ongoing work. It's unpleasant. I don't know if you're a manager and you're watching this every single week, you need to be doing, you know, these, um, these questions. And again, I'm going to share with you our top tip for it to increase retention, which already, you know, it's conducting these pulse meetings. And I'm going to go over exactly how to do these pulse meetings, um, daily, how long, how should you start it? How should you finish it? and all of that. If this show was helpful, friend, let me know. I would appreciate it. It would mean the world. Just send me one line. Again, come to our website, makingdoughshow.com. Scroll all the way down. There's a form. Just submit it. Uh, let me know. What are your thoughts? Is there, do you have any questions about some of the stuff we're talking about? Are you interested in these topics at all? Do you need help marketing your restaurant? You want us to help you grow your sales? Let me know. I got that PDF as well. Check the link below. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in to another show. I appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to not miss a show. Yeah. And with that, let's get back to work and make some dough. Bye.